Hello, so I'm here at the University of Oxford in the Department of Physics, and I'm here as part of an Easter camp for the Olympiad. Now, this is run jointly between the British Physics Olympiad and also the British Astronomy and Astrophysics Olympiad, and it's very much a training camp for some of the most able students. Now, thousands of students over the last year have sat papers, and what they've done is they've selected some of the very brightest and the most able and hardworking students to come to Oxford to spend five days doing a series of lectures, of tutorials, of workshops and also practical activities and they're going to then use this to inform their selection for the International Olympiads which are coming up this summer. So in this video I had a chance to actually meet some of the people who are running the sessions. I also had a chance to speak to many of the students who are all absolutely wonderful and there's another video where I looked at their advice uh, that they gave me about how they're going to be preparing for their exams coming up and what they're trying to do to actually achieve the highest grades. So in the rest of the video, I've got some interviews and also some of the kind of activities that students have actually been completing over this five-day Easter camp. Robin, um, why are we here in Oxford at the moment in the Easter holidays? Well, we've got a few students here, uh, 12 uh, doing the physics and 14 doing the astrophysics. Um, the purpose is to develop their skills, build confidence, um, see people working together, um, and uh, see if we can put up with a sort of 12-hour uh, day for a few days doing physics, uh, both theoretical and experimental physics. It is pretty intense, uh, but it's good fun, actually. And, and what kind of activities are the students actually doing? So I've seen the timetable. Like you say, it is quite intense, but it isn't just lecture after lecture after lecture, is it? No, it, it's a mix. We try and... Uh, trying to develop skills, I suppose, uh, more than just skills of solving a problem on paper or uh, drawing the right kind of graph. You're trying to develop the skills of communication and observation. Um, and these are sometimes kind of, these are things you might pick up at some stage, but they're really important because if you're going to do physics, you have to have some ideas, um, you know, of what you're going to do. And looking at an experiment and not just looking for wh where the worksheet is to be found uh, and following a set of instructions which stops you thinking uh, there aren't any worksheets you're told to sort of uh, measure uh, the focal length of this lens or uh, which, which you can't access because it's in a long plastic tube you have to think uh, well how's it where on the sheet does it tell me how to do this it doesn't um, uh, so you have to go over that sort of barrier of finding things that you think, well, I don't know how to do it. Uh, and, uh, well, of course, you could ask a lot of impossible questions, but that wouldn't really get anyone very far. Uh, what you're asking is questions which seem impossible, and yet, if you think about them, you think, oh, uh, yeah, well, I could try this and try that and uh, um, give it a go uh, and, and not be stymied by my own personal sort of feelings. I'm sure I'm not up to this. Uh, and actually, th th that's a real breakthrough. Uh, and it's been quite nice to see the students doing a lab downstairs where they've been doing practical work, they've been in some lectures, they've had tutorials as well, and then they other, have. And other sessions where they're actually developing a lot of the skills they've maybe seen in mathematics, but applying it to, phys to physics or even astro problems. Yes, we do include the mathematics. So it's, it's physics with the math. So you do the calculations, you do uh, calculus, integrations, differentiations, things like that. I mean, it's not really advanced maths, but it's certainly not avoiding it and trying to sort of get round it. Um, you sort of, uh, the questions are uh, uh, amenable to uh, school maths. That's what it's about. It's not about knowing extra maths or extra physics. Uh, the physics is, there are little bits extra from a current A level, uh, the things that one used to have in the old A level or when it was rather overstuffed, to be honest. And um, in terms of the students who are here this week, how did you select them? How did they become invited to this event in the first place? Well, uh, of course, one might say by success. Uh, uh, that's true, but that's a bit sort of uh, unclear. So it's by, it's by hard work. It's by doing lots and lots of problems. Um, and you think, well, I'm not all that good at solving problems. I find them quite difficult. Well, they are. That's why we do them, because it's no good doing something very easy. You're not going to sort of really develop yourself. You need to have tough problems. And you think, oh, well, I'm trying to solve this, but I've got a bit stuck. So I'll have another go tomorrow. Um, and then I'll have another look at the weekend. And I'll discuss it with somebody and I'll still keep going until I actually solve it. And the students here, they, they've already done some of the Physics Olympiad papers? Uh, 
they have done the various physics Olympiad papers, yes. Um, they, they, they start with round one, which is the November paper. It's a long paper. Um, it's longer than sort of, I think most A-level papers are now. Um, and it's all about solving problems. And the way to be able to do it is to practice previous papers. You might think that's pretty obvious. Um, it, it is, and yet people sort of don't get round to it. And so they come along, they're unprepared. They find the questions difficult. They are difficult. I find them difficult. Uh, it's all very well when I'm writing some of them that you think, oh, this isn't difficult enough. But you come back six months later when you've forgotten the question yourself, and you think, this is quite a difficult question. I'll have to think about this. So the, they are difficult questions. If you solve one, that's very good. If you solve two, that's even better. You feel you know a real. You feel empowered by being successful. But it is practice. It's uh, you may think, oh, some people can just do it. Well, uh, you maybe, uh, but most people do it by actually practicing and preparing and trying these problems out and being fluent in them. And for the students who do well on this uh, Easter training camp. What's the next step for them in terms of the Olympiad? Well, from these 12 or 14, we select two teams of five students each to form the, uh, the UK team to enter the International Physics Olympiad competition, which this year is held in Japan, uh, or the International Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics, which this year is held in Poland. So those two teams of five will have further preparation, uh, which is... Uh, our preparation is rather disrupted by A-level preparation, but you know we, we uh, have to give way to A-levels because they are what count for university entrance. Um, and our students seriously worry about the A-levels because you have to be sort of just saying the right things in your A-level exams. Uh, and A-levels are a necessary, uh, a necessary evil, one might say. They're very good. Um, but you know, when one's sort of focused on the Olympiad, suddenly they seem like a distraction. And what's the actual format of the uh, International Olympiad for, for the physics in particular? Well, it's fairly clear cut. There's a five hour theoretical paper and a five hour experimental paper. And the experiments are something we have prepared on. We have some past IFO experiments um, and we have the students doing about five of those. That's 25 hours of practical work, um, which again seems a lot, but actually five hours goes quite quickly. Um, if you're thinking and focusing and, and uh, trying things out, um, and it's, it's not an experiment where you reach the end after five hours, you just sort of put your pencil down, that's it. it uh, nobody reaches the end, they just get harder and harder, you kind of, kind of get a bit more wayward and you sort of, uh, your graphs get a bit more scattered uh, and, and the readings, it, it just get, you, you kind of get ground down a bit. Um, but it's very satisfying to do some of these they're interesting physics. They're not um, there just to sort of fill up the time. They are experiments which you, you really you find out something from them. And the theoretical papers, um, they're all available online um, and you can try them out. Again, you'd think, oh, these are impossible. Uh, well, suddenly, if you haven't prepared, um, you've got to prepare these things. You've got to practice, try things out, and you get a broader, perhaps a little broader range of knowledge in width and topics you kind of just have heard about. But we don't do quantum mechanics and sort of uh, general relativity and stuff like that. It's just not the sort of it's, it, it is. You know, it's you could recognise it as an old school syllabus. And it's very important to sort of uh, think that what you want is not to cover a wider range of subjects, it's to cover um, the depth, to have clever questions where it's the same old knowledge but asked differently and so you can find, you, you get a greater understanding of what's going on. Robin, thank you so much for your time and uh, inviting me along and also good luck to you and the team as you uh, take on the rest of the world. Thank you very much. So could you explain what the students have been doing in this lab this afternoon? So this is a series of practicals that are more challenging and slightly more original than they would meet at A-level, but using the same skill set. So what we aim to do is develop their problem-solving skills, so skills they already have but applied in unfamiliar situations. And I think looking at the questions, it's quite similar to maybe the kind of questions somebody might get in an exam where it's using everyday equipment. So I think you're using torches and, yep. and lenses. We, we aim to use very, very familiar equipment. I mean, most of our experiments actually, you, know, you could fit them in a shoebox and, and get them from the supermarket. You really could. So we aim to use very, very straightforward equipment to do slightly more original 
and slightly more um, abstract experiments. So it makes them think about the actual underlying theory. And it is, it's like an A-level practical. You know, you've, you've got the practical skills, you've seen the practical, now you have to put it in a slightly different context. And you were concentrating on uncertainty and how students could account for that. And, and also, I suppose, why are they doing this as part of this Olympiad training camp? Why are they doing a practical task? Okay, so to answer the first question, we look at developing the finesse of their practical skills because quite often practical skills are quite crude. They, they take a, a small range of data. They don't have to worry about the precision of their, their answers. So in our practicals, they, they have to account for uncertainty. They have to carry results through from one part to another. So if they don't work carefully, then the, the results, the errors just compound and you end up with nonsense, you end up with chaos. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we do this is because the International Physics Olympiad assigns 40% of their marks to the practical. So if you're an, an IFO candidate, you would be doing a five hour practical. And in that five hours, you, you get a cardboard box which you open and you get some instructions and you've got five hours to sort out a practical and, and you need to be quick, but you need to be careful, you need to be you know, precise. So these are the skills we teach them. Uh, and that sounds pretty intense, doing a five hour long kind of practical assessment. And, and what kind of things are the, are the people assessing that really looking for? What are the, the kind of things they're going to be awarding students marks for? You'd be surprised that even at the international level, they're still awarding marks for headings in the table and the quality of the graphs and how well the points are plotted and units on your axes, as well as deriving some, some quite um, interesting theory and then using results to, to prove or verify that theory. So some of the skills that you learn at GCSE still apply at the very highest levels. Thank you so much. No problem. This is the Oxford Selection Camp where we have 14 students gathered from across the UK and we're going to be selecting only five students plus one reserve to make the UK team to go to the International Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics. The students, in order to be able to be here today, had to do really well in two quite hard papers earlier in the year. The first one was the British Physics Olympiad Round 1 paper, sat in November. They needed to get a top gold in that. And then those who got a top gold were invited to take the January BAAO competition paper. And those, the best people from, from the combined sort of effect of that were chosen to come to this camp. So we've got a total of 14. It's a really good mix. I think there's some really strong candidates here this week. Um, but actually, there's, um, it, it could go either way. They've got some tough exams coming up. We're going to be doing a data analysis exam on Tuesday afternoon, which is going to be two hours long. It's pretty hard. And then there's going to be a three-hour long theory exam on Wednesday morning. And that's how they finish the camp with a bang. Uh, and that's going to be something where we're going to look at the data analysis marks, we're going to look at the theory marks. Within that theory paper is actually going to be a long observational astronomy question as well. And we're going to sort of add all those marks together and look at a big spreadsheet. And that's how we're going to decide our final five plus our reserve. So all being well, all being well, that team is then going to be chosen to uh, participate on behalf of the UK in this year's International Olympiad on Astronomy and Astrophysics, which is taking place in in Poland from the 10th to the 20th of August. So between this camp and then, there'll be other training camps, there'll be some online camps. Uh, but overall, overall, it's going to be largely down to the students to do a lot of the teaching themselves, to sort of learn a lot of the material themselves. The UK has got a fantastic record at these competitions. We get medals like nobody's business. And one of the things that I'm really hoping for is that in that room over there right now are going to be some people who are going to compete for those gold and silver and bronze medals in this year's competition. It will be really exciting. So in terms of the requirements for the students, yeah. not many students tend to do G GCSE astronomy. Mm. Um, is their background mainly maths and physics or is there any extra requirement for them to learn things on top of what they, they cover in their, their normal lessons at school? Okay, so in terms of the competition papers that they've sat so far, it's been entirely maths and physics. What we did in the January paper, the BWO competition paper, was we had some questions set in an astrophysical context, or sometimes the equations will be given. So if it was something that we knew would be unfamiliar to most A-level students, then the relevant information was going to be given to them. Um, once they're at the camp, what we're actually covering are things that go far beyond what most A-levels will ever go near to in some 
terms of astronomy and astrophysics. The astronomy itself is very much the observational astronomy side, so knowing your way around the sky. The astrophysics is knowing what is it you're looking at, you know, what is the actual fundamental object that you're looking at. So that's sort of how it sort of distinguishes between the two words. The astronomy is not something that is necessary at all to make it to the camp, but once you're at the camp, one of the things that you're sent is some preparatory work, including the very basics of learning your way around the sky. And in fact, those will be some of the aspects tested in the observational astronomy question in their Wednesday free hour paper. And are most of the students wanting to go and study astrophysics at university, or are they, is there a whole range of different uh, courses that they're wanting to study in, in the future? Most of them will want to do either maths or physics at university. We do get some who want to do computer science. We have had some in the past who wanted to do chemistry. Um, so we, we take from across the STEM range, but it is primarily maths and physics. One of the things that's particularly noticeable actually about the astronomy team is it tends to be a little bit more maths heavy than the physics team. Uh, we get a surprising number who go on to do maths undergraduates, and in fact quite a lot of the helpers who we've got helping us today and the two team leaders going to Poland this year were people who, after finishing their, their go on the UK team in 2017 and 2019, went on to do maths degrees. So just because you don't necessarily want to be going down an astrophysics route as part of your university or your career mm -hmm. doesn't stop you taking part and enjoying this competition. Absolutely. So fundamentally, it's all about problem solving. And if you enjoy problem solving and you're just happy to do it in the context of stars, then we'll take you. So, so Josh, what are the students doing at the moment? So we're currently running a session on maths for astrophysics. Um, and this is the theory part of the session. Tomorrow we're going to be doing a data analysis part. So we're um, teaching and going over the prerequisite mathematics topics needed um, and then basically giving them some questions applying that theory to astrophysics. Um, and are there, are there a lot of the math skills ones they will have covered in school as part of the A-level math course? Yeah, um, hopefully covered in part of maths and further maths, um, but we're going over them now, um, mentioning stuff more pertinent to astrophysics um, and hopefully just getting them to ask them some questions. So hopefully that's been useful and gives you a little bit more information about what happens at one of these Easter camps. And if you'd like to get involved yourself, then do make sure you have a look at the British Physics Olympiad website.